mounting criticism of President Obama's foreign policy dominates headlines and is being heard with louder and louder voices. Many say the mounting chaos in the Middle East has the administration on the defensive. And one well-known political website goes so far as to say the region is in free fall and faults Obama's policies. So how perilous is it? And what or whom is to blame? Joining me on set to talk about this is Aaron Cohen, national security expert, former member of the Israeli Special Forces. He now trains military and law enforcement agencies, and he can also be heard weekends in Los Angeles on KFI AM 640. Okay, Aaron Cohen, how bad is it? <laughs> a lot of stuff. That was a major power struggle right now, Larry, between Iran and Saudi Arabia. That is the crux of the problem. Saudi Arabia uh, lost its uh, closest ally, the former president um, Ali Abdel uh, Salame, when the uh, uh, when he fell during the Arab Spring a couple of years ago. Iran is now seizing the opportunity to infiltrate. The reason why is because at the end of the day, in this region, this Cold War is about power. Okay. To put it simply, as some might say, why is it America's problem? Well, America, this became America's problem the, the moment that President Obama decided to step forward with this appeasement thing that he's been doing. Terrorism has become an American problem since 9-11. We've had thousands of troops deployed over the last uh, uh, decade um, in order to be able to quell threats such as ISIS. Um, and the problem now is that this has manifested into a much greater threat. ISIS would, in comparison to Iran's potential nuclear capability, is, 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 a, is a small child. If Iran has the ability to be able to pr procure and secure a nuclear bomb, there's a very good chance that they could use it. And that's what makes this situation so uh, dangerous. Now, the Iranians have also now been framed into the photo. The Americans, by negotiating with Iran, have basically put the Iranians on the national stage and have given them the ability to be able to be looked at as just another country going for... And is that not better than not negotiating? What do you gain out of not talking? Well, y you can't talk when the missile gets shot. There's nothing to talk about. You can't no, talk... there's no missile shot. Well, correct, and that's the problem. We so you're trying to prevent the missile from being shot. You can't prevent it if you don't talk. Correct, unless the people that we're trying to negotiate with are lying, unless they are ideo ideologically and fundamentally motivated, which is the case with Iran. And the problem with this particular situation from the national security angle for me, Larry, is I'm okay with the negotiating, but we need to know exactly how long it would take for the Iranians to be able to have a nuclear-grade missile. That's what I'd want to know. Yemen. How, how big a mess is Yemen? Yemen's a mess, Larry. It's a big mess, the, uh, and, and it's because Yemen is, is on the border of Saudi Arabia. Um, they are essentially... Uh, 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 we're essentially a, a, a relatively quiet country that has now gone into turmoil. Um, and the reason why it's so messy is because Iran is now uh, attacking um, or now or is now in a scuttle with Saudi Arabia over Yemen because Yemen sits on a border which allows the Al-Qaeda um, uh, wing in Yemen to be able to access Saudi Arabia. Has this hurt our friendship with Saudi Arabia? It does because Saudi Arabia seems to be one of the more put together pieces in the region as opposed to Iran who's chasing or looking for this nuclear capability. And so the moment we lose Yemen to the Iranian uh, forces, which is called the Quds, which Iranian is now backing in Yemen, um, and the Saudis are now trying to fight, we now lose an, a, a foothold in this Cold War between these two power Middle Eastern countries scrapping for position. James Jeffrey, he was Obama's ambassador to Iraq, top national security aide in the George W. Bush White House. He describes Obama's Middle East policy as a god free for all, free fall. Do you share that view? It's pretty harsh. It's pretty harsh. I, I think Obama's policy it comes comes from a good place, but I think it's missing several points. And I'm coming from, from the Israeli side of this answer. And what I mean is, at the end of the day, 
unless you have a very clearly mapped out strategy of where you want to get, then taking little steps or sidestepping your way through the process, hoping to appease everybody in the region, doesn't work in the Middle East. It may work with other countries, but the Middle East is so gray. There's so many different pieces that can affect where we end up uh, falling in terms of our national security in the long run that if we don't have a clearly mapped out plan and we keep winging it and try to appease, ultimately at the end we may end up seeing ourselves in a more dangerous situation. Americans don't want boots on the ground though, do they? Well, they don't, but, and it's unfortunate, but unfortunately there has to be. There's so many threats now that have emerged in the last uh, decade. Um, again, you have ACAP or Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. You've got ISIS right now in Iraq. Here's the craziness, Larry. We've got, we've got the Americans backing up the Saudis who are fighting uh, the Iranian-backed Quds in Saudi Arabia, and we've got the Iranians who uh, are backing up the Quds uh, as well as Hezbollah, who we're also providing uh, uh, some support to in order to protect Israel. And so there's so many different pieces that Obama really needs to sit down and figure out what his, where he wants to be. Well, he, he inherited a lot of this. I agree. Okay. And he's in a tough spot, right? Agree. I mean, because, as you say, there's such turmoil, as Clinton said, he almost had a deal with the, the Arabs and the Israelis, and Arafat backed out of that that this almost is insoluble. It is insoluble, and I agree with what you're saying. Um, so the question then becomes, in my mind, is what do we have to do to prevent, what, who is the lesser of two evils, and where do we need to be in relation to all of the worst threats amongst the many to prevent the next terror attack here in this country? And I think in, instead of, again, trying to appease, I mean, you're absolutely right, Clinton, had a very hard time, every president's had a hard time with the Middle East, but it really just comes down to power. You know, there's so much money, there's so much oil. How did other... Carter pull that off on a peace treaty that still lasts? I believe Carter pulled off this peace treaty uh, uh, carefully but luckily, and I think the times were different. I don't think that splinter organizations such as ISIS, I don't think that organizations such as Al-Qaeda, I don't believe that terror organizations had the recruiting capability and the propaganda capability that they do now because of social media. Any kid it right now can get up. It just changed. It brought the oceans together. And so every lower middle class kid in South London can now get online, hop on a plane, infiltrate through Turkey, wind up in uh, Syria, get training and either fight the American and, and, their, and our 59 allies in the Middle East and Iraq and Syria, or they can come back to Europe and then open fire at a, at a magazine like Charlie Hebdo. And concerning Israel, even though Netanyahu was re-elected, there's a lot of disagreement in Israel on his policies, right? There is. It, it, Bibi's been having a very hard time. Now, he was re-elected, but, but President Obama did what he could to try and get in that mix. Um, which is not necessarily the right thing when you're talking about a demo democratically elected prime minister, which is what Bibi is. Um, at the end of the day, though, Israelis have always been very torn. The reason why is because they face, they're constantly in a state of war, and I believe that Israelis ultimately at the end of the day want peace. They want to play matkot on the beach, which is their ping pong, and they want to have a good time. The problem is, is that there's just too many problems to not have the average Israeli go, look, we've been through this, we've been doing it for 60 years, we've been in five wars, we've all served in the military, our cousins, our sons, our brothers. At the end of the day, they want to be able to conduct business, have companies, and make money. And so I don't blame them for not putting Bibi back in. To quote the tribe, oy vey. Oy vey, zay gesund und Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Larry. Aaron Cohen, great having him with us. Look forward to having him many, many times.